Hey everybody, it's Alex. So I just went to the March for Our Lives today here in Hartford. It is Saturday, June 11th. There's a bunch of nationwide uh, marches happening today and I went to the one here in Hartford. Uh, so I got some videos of it and uh, I know it's gonna be a little bit different, but I figured I might as well show you some of the footage from it. every one of you for coming out today. This is arranged just a few weeks ago and we've surprised everything and I'm, we're all happy that everyone is out here today in Hartford to advocate for, and again, an important issue. And it's my pleasure now to introduce our Lieutenant Governor for just a few words here today. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, students, parents, activists, Thank you so much for coming out. And I will say of all of the young people that are here, you are braver than many of our United States senators. Yeah. <laughs> present, present company of Senator Blumenthal and Senator Murphy, of course, excluded. <laughs> Here we are, 23 years after Columbine, 15 years after Virginia Tech, 10 years after Sandy Hook, we know what this is, four years after Parkland, and just about 20 days after Uvalde, when we have had 40 mass shootings in the past 20 days. That is why we must act, and that means we have to take this fight to the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Senate, but also with us when we go to vote, because there will be some extremely clear choices on the ballot. So I wanna thank each of you for your courage, your energy, and your enthusiasm, and know that some of the biggest changes that were made in this country, whether we're talking about women's rights, or children's rights, or civil rights, have come from young people. So thank you all for being here. you and the governor for being at the forefront and thank you to our state legislature uh, Gary Winfield is here with me a state senator from New Haven and he has helped as a co-chairman on the judiciary committee to make some of the best laws in Connecticut are right here some of the best laws in the country are right here in Connecticut now uh, I want to thank Madison and Allen and Campfield. Why, why don't you come forward? The, the organizers. These are the guys who put it together. Let's give them a really resounding applause. Thank you. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of the folks, and they happen to be young people, yes, in Stamford in Newtown, where I was earlier, hundreds of people, literally hundreds around Connecticut, turning out today for rallies and marches like this one, saying enough is enough. Enough is enough. Connecticut today is saying enough is enough, and it's telling my colleagues in the United States Congress do your job! Do your job! Vote for common sense, sensible measures on gun violence. Now, I'm going to come right to the point here. Senator Murphy and I are involved in discussions right now with five Republicans, five Democrats, 
and we want to reach some steps forward, some measures that will save lives. It isn't anywhere near where we want to go, I'll tell you right now, because I favor a total ban on assault weapons. Yes. The red flag laws that have saved lives, literally thousands and thousands of lives here in Connecticut and around the country. 19 states have them. And we ought to end the sweetheart deal that the manufacturers, gun manufacturers and retailers have to prevent lawsuits. They have near complete immunity. Totally unacceptable. Let's repeal that law. But here's what we're trying to do, because America is demanding, America is demanding, do something. Do something to save lives. And if we can do something real and meaningful, not window dressing, not face saving, not check the box, real and meaningful, I'll be for it. Because we need to take steps forward even if it isn't everything we would want and build on it. Whatever we achieve, we need to build on it, do more, and ban assault weapons. Make sure that we have universal background. with the organizers, Maddie, Allen, and Campfield to help get all of this set up and put together. And I'm also going to uh, give a brief speech. I just want to start by saying, um, I was seven years old in 2012 when Sandy Hook happened. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, my name is Vali Pandiala, and I'm with one of the, and I'm with the organizers here. Um, I'm just gonna deliver some brief remarks. Um, I was seven years old when Sandy Hook happened in 2012. I'm 17 years old now. I was in elementary school. I'm graduating high school next year. Um, and sometimes it just, it just feels like nothing has changed in those 10 years. Uh, children are still being gunned down in schools um, and still nothing is being done. When we talk about memorable events that we've lived through, these are events that typically we remember every detail about. Um, ask someone where they were when Kennedy was shot, they'll tell you exactly where they were. Ask someone where they were during 9-11, they'll tell you what they were feeling, what they were wearing, uh, where they were. They'll tell you every detail, but that's because these are once in a lifetime events that change the course of history. And they stick in our minds precisely because their aftermath transforms our society forever. You would think that Sandy Hook, Columbine, and Stoneman Douglas would have that same impact in our memories, those, those same abilities to transform the way we see the world, that same ability to make change in our society, but it seems like that hasn't happened yet. The sad truth is gun violence is so prevalent in America that to remember where you were, to remember every detail of every shooting, is to remember where you were at every moment of every single day, every day in the year. In 2020, 45,000 people were killed from gun violence. Every year, three million children are impacted by it, whether because they were killed, because they saw someone killed, or because they were traumatized by it. Gun violence is a preventable epidemic and it is terrorizing our children. Yet again and again, our leaders choose to do nothing. They look away as guns become the leading cause of death for children under 18, as we march for our lives around the nation, 
as millions of children cower in fear of guns in the sanctuaries that should be their schools, legislators around the nation do nothing. The House just passed a gun control bill doomed to fail in the Senate. Rather than focus on gun control measures that could prevent another Uvalde, Texas lawmakers chose to focus on drag queens instead. Gun violence in America, especially in schools, has become so normalized that it is no longer a priority for our lawmakers. Why not? That is why we march today. We must remind them that it is a priority. 246 mass shootings this year through June 5th. We are on pace right now to match last year's numbers, which was one of the worst years on record since the Gun Violence Archive has been keeping track from 2014. As a black youth, I'm clearly affected by what is going on in our country. When I walk out of my front door and walk to the store, I have a target on my back. When I step off the school bus and walk up the stairs, I have a target on my back. After the Uvalde shooting, I ask myself, when will this stop? But I feel like that's what usually goes on, right? A mass shooting occurs, we say our, oh my God, how could this happen? And, you know, God bless their family. We go back home, we see our families, we eat dinner and we go to bed. And it usually leaves our mind until the next one comes. This is a continuous cycle that I hope you realize will not end unless you do something about it. I joined the Youth Council a couple of months ago, not because anyone that I had a tie with uh, was affected by gun violence, but because I was constantly seeing these mass shootings on the news. I, as a member of the council, have conducted a couple of discussions with senators to talk about the issue and have helped host events at high schools and churches. And even if you don't, hey, thank you. Even if you don't believe that you're directly involved or affected by gun violence, you're mistaken. I know for a fact that many of you parents out here or conflicted or even a little bit nervous to send your children to school after Uvalde. Or even after the Buffalo shooting, black and brown parents were scared to let their children go to the store alone. But for people of color, it has of course been like this. That is why I'm here to talk about what CAGV does and how you can get involved. CAGV, CAGV writes and lobbies most of the gun legislation that gets passed in Connecticut. The staff works relentlessly having constant action meetings to urge legislators to pass new laws. Additionally, because states like Connecticut lead on gun violence protection laws, oftentimes other states well replicate what we do here. A good example of that is red flag laws. Red, red flag laws, which are active in several states, allow family members of a certain individual to take that aforementioned individual to state court if they pose a danger to themselves or others with their firearm. The state court can then order the temporary removal of that firearm. Connecticut literally invented red flag laws after the Connecticut lottery shooting. It is very difficult, nearly impossible to pass federal gun legislation. This is due to the various perspectives uh, and ideals of Americans nationally. Those that own household guns are much less worried about a mass shooting uh, occurring in their communities than those that don't. Most states usually stick to one party or another, except for swing states, of course, but that is why it's the states that have the greatest chance of passing good legislation to protect people from gun violence. And CAGV is the leading advocacy organization in Connecticut when it comes to state legislation. Not bad, yeah. yeah so earlier I heard uh, commentary about remembering where we were. I'm gonna start off with a remembrance of where I was. Um, and this is when uh, I had to jump on the ground. Right? You know, when the bullets ring out, that's what you do. But it was different than other times because this wasn't the first time this happened. This time I had to pull my kids to the ground with me. And that was because the bullets uh, came into the house. Oh. oh my gosh. And a lot of people paid a lot of attention to that because it was me. But it happens all the time. And people don't pay attention. And there's something wrong in this country right now. There's something wrong, there's decay in this country, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember where I was when I found out what I was about all I was standing in my kitchen and I got a text. And as I got that text, what I heard was my two four-year-olds running around the house 
filling that house with the sounds of joy. And what occurred to me was those parents that I had just gotten a text about their children would never hear that again. And somehow, we keep going on the way that we're going on. Somehow, it's okay to tell people that you have thoughts and prayers for them. Well, I'm going to tell you what those parents want. Because they don't want those thoughts and prayers. Yeah. They want their children. Yes. 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 And I guess I'm doing okay because I didn't write anything because I was so damn angry. <laughs> Listen, we are sacrificing all kinds of folks, because it's not just the children. You can't go sit in my house. You can't go shopping. You can't go to a concert. And you can't go to school. You can't go to school. Or a church, or a temple. I'm trying. Kids have to be able to go to school. And you don't have to have it happen to you to know what it is. I have a child, four children, I have a child that was just this year in school, and they locked the school down. If you've experienced that, you know what I felt. You can't do anything. You can't get answers. You can't get into school. Although the mother, thank God for her, and you all, they got it at school. But you know you're <laughs> So that was the march. Uh, I just got back from Starbucks here in West Hartford. Picking up some stuff for my sister and her friend because uh, it was her birthday yesterday. So I got her some something. And I'm in West Hartford right now, and the Starbucks here is just unionized. So celebrating my sister's birthday and the first unionized Starbucks in Connecticut. Talk about a win-win. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for watching this. Um, I know this is a little bit different, but if you liked it, let me know, and maybe I'll do more stuff like this sometime, like more like vlog style videos um like if everyone's like another protest or rally or something then maybe i'll do more of these but let me know what you think uh in the comments down below uh thank you all so much for watching and have a great day i'll see you soon